guys, Mark the Mentor here, back with another video. In this video, I want to talk about why so many Amazon DSPs are filing for bankruptcy. What seems to be the problem with the Amazon DSP um, program? All right, so for those that you, for those of you that don't know, DSP stands for Delivery Service Partner, right? Totally different platform than Amazon Relay. Um, delivery service partner is uh, what you guys see delivering to your home. This blue van, like you see on the screen here, that's what the DSP program is. Basically, it is a contractor who Amazon brings on board to manage a fleet of um, vans. Now, I have a history, well, let me say this. I've never been an Amazon DSP, um, but I did apply in 2014, and I got called in 2017 to onboard the position. Well, a position, the the opportunity uh, came three, eight, three years later for me to onboard as a DSP. So I applied in 2014. They got to my application to bring me on board in 2017. And I did go through the process but like at the last minute I pulled out and I'll tell you why um, I'll tell you why but you know what let's just let me just give a brief overview of what happened so 2017 they emailed me I'll never forget it um, it was a Monday Monday it was very short notice last minute um, for those of the, the, those of you that don't know I'm in Chicago they emailed me say hey we pulled your application we're hiring new DSPs in your area, and we'd like for you to come in for an onboarding session. Fast forward down the email, the onboarding session is in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, this is 2017. For those of you that were in the industry back then, you know that was during the time frame where Amazon was just uh, uh, crushing everybody, um, kicking ass and taking names, right? A lot of companies were going out of business, the companies that weren't going out of business were shifting over to Amazon's platform, meaning companies that didn't um, get put out of business, they were they were opening up Amazon stores. So basically, if you deal with a, had a company that had their own website, instead of going through this third-party logistics company to handle their final mile delivery, which what they were doing, it just made more sense. And Amazon was selling them on, let us fulfill, let us warehouse your stuff. Open an Amazon store parallel to your own website. You can still sell your same products on an Amazon store. We'll bill for you, and then we'll get our 10% cut, but we'll handle all the fulfillment and all the warehousing, and then you can just focus on sales. The smart companies uh, did that, right? So 2017 for me was not kind of a good year. I saw things dwindling down because we were feeling the effects of a lot of the companies that Amazon um, that Amazon put out of business um, because we had a lot of accounts that, you know, freight slowed down for final mile um, because either they went out of business or because they were moving over to Amazon, so on and so forth. So when they contacted me, it was kind of at a good time. Um, so I got up midnight 12 30 hit the road to drive down to st louis that thursday morning so that i could be at this meeting at 7 a.m right i didn't question if they were going to have if they're going to do a meeting in chicago it didn't matter it was amazon at the time and i was open to the opportunity because at that time it was always oh, amazon right so boom got down there early got to the meeting now this is at a hotel and a conference room and there's a lot of other people there as well they were bringing in a lot of um dsps but they were hiring for like the the midwest region so they had people that came from kansas city missouri people from st louis they were opening up rapidly opening up new facilities at that time so they were onboarding a lot more dsps indianapolis minnesota i think i met somebody a few other guys from chicago um so we were there they basically put this packet in front of you um and offered you this opportunity right so I was happy on my drive back to Chicago and listen, remembering some of the things that were talked about at this onboarding meeting 
and putting this package together, uh, the package that they put together, and I was kind of excited. Now, when I got back to Chicago the next day and I started going over this package, the numbers kind of didn't make sense to me. On top of that, they only gave me 30 days to be up and running. So they wanted me up and running within 30 days with 20 vans, right? And then they said after that first 30 days, I needed to scale up 10 more vans, right? So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get 20 vans, hire 40 drivers, hire two dispatchers, and hire four managers, do this massive hiring, and, you know, locate, source these vans all within 30 days, plus all the other stuff I had to do to get this contract up and going. Not to mention, not to mention, I wasn't going to get paid for 45 days. Now, yes, I could have factored, but I don't like to factor. I don't do factoring. So I was going to fund this myself, right? For me to get up and running, and let me let me say this before I go further. The DSP program that's in place now is not the same DSP program that was in place in 2017. It was a totally different program, and the reason why they changed it is for what I'm telling you now. All right, for me to get up and running, 20 vans, 40 drivers, and you say, why do you need 40 drivers? Okay, anybody knows the DSP, these these guys are out delivering 10 to 14 hours a day, right? So my first 20 drivers, they're going to hit 40 hours within the first three and a half days. I'm not going to pay them overtime. It's a seven-day-a-week contract. So I have to have another 20 drivers to roll the other three to four days, right? So 40, 50 drivers, you need 10 extra drivers, alternates, right? All right, so I got to hire all these people, get all these vans, and be up and running and, 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 and have this big, massive hiring event. Basically, what I'm saying, the first month and a half before I got the first set, it's going to cost me a quarter million dollars just to get this thing up and going, right? My payroll is going to be 100 grand, all right? 100 grand. I had no say-so. They, Amazon gives you no say-so on how you run your business as a DSP contractor. Yes, they promote it to you as a, like you have this contract, but it's really like you're, middle, you're a high paid middle manager, really. That's what you are. You're managing a group of vans in a, a coverage area for them, and they're just paying you to do so. The margin was 10 to 12%. They told me what the margin was. I didn't have a say so on the bidding. They said, this is what we're gonna pay you. You're going to do this. You're going to do the damn near down to where I filled the doggone vans up at. I had no say-so. No say-so on what I paid. They told me I could forget the rate. I think it was like sixteen twenty two an hour or whatever it was back then. They had a, um, a spreadsheet on everything that I had to do, implement, right? Told me my margin, everything. So for me to run 20 vans a day, 20 vans a day, right, at $300 a van, right, Right? That's six grand, right? I would take home, and this is on a good day. The stars are aligning, right? A grand. So after running 20, 20 vans, right, my net bring home would be a grand. And that's if everything went well. There were no hiccups, right? That was the first strike to me that just, you know, I'm like, man, to, to run that many vehicles a day, to only make a thousand dollars, it just you know the margins were very very low. Um, and this is factoring in payroll, which was the largest expense, factoring in fuel, factoring in insurance, factoring in the financing or the rental or the leasing of the vans. You know, Amazon wasn't offering the 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 the, the platform that they have now, where they're dealing with Element, where they own the vans and you're leasing them. Um, uh, through that platform that wasn't we you had to back then you had to source everything yourself right so as i'm running through the stress of trying to get up and rolling within 30 days um about the 20th day and i'm really crunching these numbers and i'm just like man this is not i don't think this is this is it this is going to be too much work too much stress to make so little money you know, I'm looking at, I mean, you do the math, <clears throat> you do the math, um, let's do the math. You're running pretty much Thanksgiving and Christmas. So let's say 363 days, um, 
363 days, right, times 6,000. That's $2.1 million, right? $2.1 million, right? 363 times uh, 6,000 gross. That's $2.1 million. All right, so you want to do... You're making $363,000 net, right, out of $2.1 million. That's at 20 vans, all right? To me, it wasn't worth it, and another reason why it wasn't worth it was the demand that they had on you. Even with him telling me, you know, when he said, man, we need you up and running in 30 days, I said, man, this is a lot for me to, to, to and I'm good, you know, but, man, this is kind of a lot to pull together in 30 days, and his response was, welcome to Amazon. And when he said that, I just knew what it would be like if I – fully went through with this. They kept preaching 99% efficiency, 99% delivery rate. Everything was 99%. Like, 90, you look, we got a 99% delivery rate. Your drivers go out, they can't come back. They can't come back until every single stop, every single package has been delivered. All right? The only thing that Amazon was covering back then was the dispatchers. They required you to have two dispatchers. Now, they gave you $1,500 a week for the dispatchers, per dispatcher. And that was to go directly to. So if they're giving me $1,500 per dispatcher, I couldn't take, all right, here's $1,000. i am paying you to dispatch. I'm keeping $500. No. We're giving you $1,500 per each dispatcher. Give the dispatcher the whole $1,500. The reason why they were funding the dispatchers because they understood the dispatchers were were this, the amount of stress and that the dispatchers were controlling everything. They were looking at those rabbits. Rabbits are the scanners that they provide uh, the, the, the 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 drivers. The, the 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 dispatchers' job was very instrumental to the success of the drivers. So they wanted to make sure that the dispatchers were paid very well to the point where they were going to give you the money to pay the dispatchers yourself. You didn't have to pay that out of your, your, your settlement, out of your profit, all right? But even still, the margins were still very low. So me being in the game and season at that point, I, I, I thought it was best to walk. And I remember this to the day a friend of mine said, man, it's probably the best thing you did that. That, you know, that might be a blessing for you, blessing in disguise, man. It seems like a lot. About two years later, and this is pre-pandemic, you start to see a lot of companies go under, a lot of bankruptcies, a lot of lawsuits, drivers under a lot of stress. There was a, a company here, and this guy, and I'm not, I'm not flexing either. There was a, a driver here that killed somebody on the expressway, and the DSP contractor that that driver was running under was the guy I was sitting next to at the onboarding session. And I kept in communication with that guy until he just stopped answering. And and he ended up getting sued. He, um, they terminated him because he had so, like, like a lot of these DSP contractors were being sued. They were being sued by the drivers, right, because of the wages. They're running 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hours a day and they're paying them a flat rate. Now, these guys are employees. You got to pay them hourly. If they go over 40 hours, you got to pay them time and a half. But they were paying them, and I don't know if they're still going out there, but if you go on Indeed or you look in some markets for an Amazon DSP uh, driver, it notice it says 140 a day, 130 a day, 120 a day. And then they tell you, you go out there, you get it done. But, it, like, some of these smart markets, it's impossible to do 200 stops in eight hours. So sometimes these guys are out 10, 12, 13, 14 hours a day, right? So after a certain time period, they're pretty much working for free. And a lot of labor lawsuits, all right? A lot of dogs getting ran over in driveways. Uh, the, the guy got killed here. So a lot of lawsuits. This guy and eventually filed bankruptcy too. A bunch were filing bankruptcy, going out of business. Um, 
because of the the, the the stress that Amazon put on these guys to meet these met- metrics that Amazon has in place, right? And they just weren't making money either. You know, the numbers ain't right. So fast forward to now with this new program that they started in 2018 where they um, brought you in, promised you this successful, create your own, be your own boss, and come in, you got $10,000, we're going to get you going, or if you're a veteran, they're going to waive the ten grand. right? It sounds good, but here's the problem that even with this um, platform in place where they're sourcing the vans for you, they're putting, they're putting everything in front of you, you just got to get up and going, why people are still failing is one, they make it seem like you're your own boss, you're not your own boss, you're a high-paid middle manager for Amazon. You have no say-so on how you run this DSP contract. None whatsoever. Like I said earlier, they tell you every single thing down to what you're paying your drivers. You have no say-so, right? They're sourcing the vans to you, but you're still responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep, the damages and everything. The only thing Amazon is covering now is the fuel. They're covering the fuel, right? But you're still responsible for your your labor, your employment, um, insurances, you know, um, unemployment insurances, the taxes, all that stuff. So your employment, right, and your 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 your, your vehicle costs are your two highest um, expenses. They're paying ten cents a stop, ten cents a package, rather. And then they're giving you like a 15% incentive if you reach certain to certain delivery matrix, uh, certain certain goals, then they'll give you a bonus of 15 cent a package. So if you hit these goals, let's say 25 cents a package. A typical Amazon DSP now is making about $150 a day. Now, if you, I don't care where you are in the country, even the smallest market, let's just do a number, let's say $14, $13 an hour, right? times 10 hours that's 130 bucks now once you add in all the other costs this is why these companies are losing this is why they're losing and this is why so many of these delivery drivers are quitting because there are some markets where they're still paying this 120 125 130 a day i'm sure and these guys are out 13 14 hours a day and once they do the math they're not making even minimum wage right so let's look at look let's look at this vice did this and this is under the new platform where amazon is putting everything together and you're just going in it's a few stories on this one i'm gonna i'm gonna maybe talk about two because i don't want to drag this video out because you know people have a short attention span but for people who are interested in becoming an amazon dsp who you know you might want to watch this all the way through. I'm speaking from people's point of view, and I'm speaking on from my point of view. I didn't do it. Thank God I didn't, but I was sourced. I was award, uh, awarded the opportunity. I was going through the process, but the numbers didn't add up, and by the grace of God, I pulled out because I probably would have been one of those guys filing for bankruptcy in 2018, 2019. And, the, and a lot of people who didn't file for bankruptcy in 2018, 2019, the guys that were running... Amazon dropped a lot of companies because they were transitioning over to this new platform that we're looking at here. And they just dumped a lot. And this is documented. You can guys can go Google this stuff and research it. They dumped a bunch of companies in 2018 and 2019 for no reason at all because they were transitioning over to this new platform, this new DSP platform. You can go do the research yourself. Just Google it. You got this guy, Jim, here, right? He is from Seattle. Uh, let's see. Let's just read. Jim is an Amazon delivery contractor in Boston who operated a fleet of 30 Amazon vans, received a call out of the blue from Amazon's corporate office in Seattle. The caller who identified themselves as a representative, representative from the Amazon Network Health Group informed Jim that Amazon was terminating his contract to deliver packages and effect closing his business. There were no rumors, no business coach saying, hey, you need to plan for nothing. 
Jim, who asked to remain anonymous because he wants to stay in the delivery business and fears retaliation for future clients, told Motherboard. This would be like someone walking into your business and shutting it down and saying, we don't care, you can sue us. I am a pimple on the butt of an elephant when it comes to Amazon. They shut him down for no reason. 16 months earlier in March of 2020, Jim had packed up his life in the Midwest, said goodbye to his wife, four kids, and dog, and headed east with his two oldest sons to open a last mile delivery company. So Amazon offered him, awarded him an opportunity under this new platform to start a Amazon, um, become an Amazon DSP contractor, but obviously there was no opportunities in the Midwest, wherever he came from in the Midwest, so he had to go to Boston. He uprooted himself, left his wife, his other kids, took his two sons to Boston. Typically, a handful of contractors operate their business out of Amazon's last mile delivery stations, the company's smallest style of warehouse. Amazon Delivery Service Partner Program advertises on its website that it partners and that its partners can expect to make up to $300,000 in annual profit with as little as $10,000 startup investment. Three, 300 grand is a lot of money. But to some people, and to most people, the um, amount of stress and the amount of wear and tear on you mentally, it may not be worth it. All right. Promises up to 300000 All right. So that's something else as well. All right. Let's scroll down. I want to get into the nitty gritty uh, of this story. 16 months later, after Jim received the call giving him two weeks notice for him to wind down operations, he notified his staff, mostly drivers who earned close to Boston's minimum wage, that he had to let them go. I went one day and said, we're done. These guys are still contacting me about their W-2s and telling me they're still trying to find work. They had families. They trusted me. How can you treat people that way? Jim sent a payroll spreadsheet listing all 86 of his employees that became unemployed when Amazon shut his business down. They and their families suffered and continue to suffer. Jim is now facing bankruptcy, a destroyed credit score because he can't make payments and losing his house. Motherboard spoke to three other Amazon deliver, delivery service partner owners in California, Georgia, and Oregon who said the Amazon delivery partner program had depleted their life savings during the pandemic and thrown them into tens or, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt. All of the delivery service partner owners asked to remain anonymous because they fear speaking publicly about the significant unpaid debts that they've accumulated. Let me scroll down some. Let me scroll down some. Let's talk about this. Uh, they got some screenshot. Amazon advertises that Amazon advertises the delivery service partner program as an opportunity for those without significant capital to invest to run their own business. Yet once launched, business owners become wholly beholden to Amazon and in a precarious financial position. That's very important. Amazon is currently facing 15 million in loss. $15 million lawsuit from two of its former Portland delivery partners that shuttered last year because they were losing money and employees trying to satisfy Amazon and their constant changes. The lawsuit alleged that Amazon controlled nearly every aspect of two Portland delivery companies' businesses. And this is just lawsuits from these two companies in this city. They have plenty of lawsuits. Amazon has plenty of lawsuits from DSPs. And not to mention the other lawsuits that they have going on. But DSPs, there's DSPs suing Amazon from all over the country because they're getting sued. They're getting sued from former drivers for unfair labor practices and a bunch of other things. Amazon did not respond to two requests for comment for this article and a series of questions about how it decides to terminate the contracts of, the, of its DSPs. Uh, when I spoke to Jim on the phone in February, he tallied his debts. He owes 350 a month for a two-year lease on, a, on parking spots. He, owns 300, he owes $350 a month for a two-year lease on parking spots and $1,800 a month for the apartment in Boston. He owes $3,200 a month for a five-year lease for the parking lot for his Amazon delivery vans and $1,200 a month for the office space where he ran the company. He signed an extended lease because he passed all of his, all of his annual Amazon audits. So this guy passed his audits, got a stellar review, and they still shut him down for no reason. 
This is why I be telling people for like the Amazon Relay, like don't depend on Amazon Relay. I see people getting excited because Amazon reaches out, they apply for the Amazon Relay, and then when Amazon gets back to them, uh, they're they're happy and like okay, Amazon is a big company, but like the dude said, you're a pimple on their butt. Amazon is going to do what's best for Amazon. So even though you may be doing everything right, don't put all your eggs in one basket because they will shut your lights off in the blink of an eye with no notice and leave you fanning in the wind. And this don't got nothing to do with it. Like this is with anybody. Don't ever put all your eggs in the one basket. But especially with this company, they have no loyalty. And I'm not bashing the company, you know, at, like for personal reasons. I'm just putting the information out there because I've saw it firsthand, right? And there's a lot of other people that are dealing with it. And I get people that con contact me all the time about how Amazon did them. And I'm like, man, you sure you didn't do nothing wrong? You know what I'm saying? But Amazon will cut you off. Here are articles about people who get reviewed and have great reviews and still get let go. You know? They'll bring you in when they need you, but if they got to cut, they got to cut. You know? Jim's biggest expense are for workers' compensation claims, leases on his vans, and van damages. He owes $23,996 for workers' comp claims, according to a letter from his insurance provider. He has yet to receive an assessment for damages on his fleet of delivery vans, often the largest expense for an Amazon delivery service partner. These guys get damage bills for $100,000. And if you're in a big market like I am, even in a small market, you probably see, you know, probably not in a small market, but big markets, you look at some of these Amazon vans, they be raggedy, they be scratched up, they be big old dents and stuff because they throwing anybody in these vans. You don't see UPS vans and FedEx vans like that because they take pride in the people that they put out on the road and they go through extensive training. They don't send you through training like that. They feel like it's a legal van, it's a Sprinter, or it's a, a Ram Pro Master. It, it, it's a regular vehicle, and you should be able to handle it. And that's not the case. All right? Um, Amazon, let's read this. It was horrible, absolutely devastating, Jim said, about Amazon's termination of his contract, knowing that Amazon did not tell him why it ended his contract. Motherboard obtained the separation agreement that Amazon gave Jim, which promises $10,000 if the DSP agrees to all of its terms, including an NDA. So they let him go, and then they don't want him to talk about it. And because we don't want you to talk about his 10 grand beat it. I'm humiliated and embarrassed. We were working seven days a week. We never took any salary or pay. We left it in the business. So he wasn't even taking money home. He was just paying all the bills and, and trying to build it. He probably didn't have enough to take any profit home, right? So now he's out here flapping in the wind. Good review, and when they decided they needed to cut back for whatever reason, he was one of the people that uh, got cut. Um, the stress of working with and losing his contract with Amazon, he says, has t taken a toll on his health. In November, he was diagnosed with heart condition. I didn't have one before I moved to Boston, but now I have it, and I have to take medication. Could you imagine how depressing it is to get fired when you think you're doing great and making big plans, and there's no recourse you can take? Everyone in my station had issues making any money. We're bleeding is the common term that was used. It means we're dying. We're not making money. We're in the red. One delivery service partner owner in Atlanta, a 62-year-old African-American veteran who opened her business in October 2020 and excited to pro and exit the program last August, told Motherboard. And, I mean, this, this article has multiple stories of, of people like this. And this isn't the only platform that is speaking to multiple people i got another one. i'm not gonna go through all these you know what i'm saying but i'm just letting you know for the guys out there that want to do this dsp that are looking into the dsp program really think this through i'm not saying don't apply you know use your own judgment use your own judgment you know be be a smart businessman or businesswoman just because i think a lot of people get um thrown off mentally when they hear the name Amazon and when they can associate their self or their business with Amazon 
I think, you know, it kind of throws off their 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 better judgment um, being a business being a business person. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't make sense uh, 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 financially, right? I don't care what the company is. If it does not make sense, you know what I'm saying? Then you shouldn't do it. Don't hope for, you know, I'm just going to take it and hope everything, you know, pans out and turns around. If you are a true businessman and you know how to do your calculations, if it doesn't make sense, it just doesn't make sense. You can't hope. And, 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 and hope that things are going to pan out. You know what I'm saying? Follow your first mind. If you consider yourself to be a good business person, business woman, if it doesn't make sense, then don't do it. Let's look at this one. Well, here's a, um, let's look at this contract. This is the NDA for transition. So once they're exiting you out, they're letting you go, right? They give you this, this, this NDA they call it a transition plan. Amazon will pay the company for all such services services in accordance with the terms and provisions of the program agreement. The company parties will not communicate the pending termination of the program agreement or the party's business relationship to any company drivers before the transition communication defined below. Now, the, com- the, the transition communication, they don't want you to tell your driver. So if they were to call today and say, hey, we're letting you go. They'll say, we're letting you go in 30 days, but you can't tell your drivers for another two weeks. So you can't tell your drivers until halfway into that 30-day mark because they don't want the drivers scrambling. And then, like most companies, like if you are in the same line of business and you're contracting to somebody, another contractor can't hire your drivers, at least for a year, for solicitation and um because I actually had this situation happen. Um, I, I forget the term that we use because I had to seek a lawyer. Um, this company was um, soliciting my drivers, and um, I had to have my lawyer send a cease and desist like, for solicitation, like, and they couldn't touch them for a year. But right here, Amazon represents will explain how drivers can apply to other DSPs. The company will take all actions responsibly requested by Amazon and other DSPs to facilitate the hiring by other DSPs of drivers who will not continue to be employed by the company after the termination date. So I want to cuss, but I want to keep, I want to monetize this video. So forget, you're letting me go, right? But my drivers, you're letting me go, taking my drivers so they can go apply somewhere else. This is why they want you to sign this NDA, and they're paying you off ten grand. This is the second richest company from the last time I I, I looked next to Apple in the world, and they're giving you ten thousand dollars. Like, what is ten thousand dollars when they're going when you're going to exit probably in the red and upwards of six figures? So I'm, I'm saying, you know, here is. When he exited, this was the bill he owed. A former Amazon delivery service partner account statement for Amazon van leases from Element. You know, Element is the the company that Amazon uses to um, manage their fleet of vans. So when you the, the 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 way the new program is like when I got was going through onboarding, you had to source your own vans, right? Amazon is providing you the vans and you're just paying the leasing and the maintenance. The only thing that they're covering is the fuel. All right. Van damages are among the steepest of these costs and often exceed $100,000 a year for van maintenance. That includes oil changes, tires, whatever the maintenance is, accidents, nicks, scratches and dings, all that stuff. All right. Amazon does not reimburse delivery service partners for expenses such as insurance claims, overtime pay, tolls and repairs, leases on vans, van damages, workers' compensation claims, office space, parking, parking and traffic tickets, labor costs for recruiters and dispatchers. They don't even pay you for the dispatchers no more. Amazon pays its delivery companies roughly $0.10 per package delivered. Roughly $150 per day per route and covers the cost of gas with additional bonuses of roughly 15 cents per package for achieving the highest performance matrix. So let's say 25% to a top tier 
uh, producer uh, in this, this program. $150 a day. Minimum wage here is $15 an hour, I think. 15 a little more than 15 I don't know. I don't keep up with minimum wage. Am I moving side of my business? I got guys making $50 an hour now. And that's because you can work at McDonald's here and get paid $20 an hour. So if I got guys carrying furniture up three flights of stairs on a 90-degree day, you think I'm going to be able to find somebody to do that for $15 an hour in 2022? No. I pay them good, and I stay in business. All right? I got guys making anywhere from uh, $25 to $50 an hour. $50 obviously is an incentive pay for certain jobs, but my I start my guys in 2022 coming in the door $25 an hour. All right? And that's on my moving side, not on my trucking side. So, you know, if minimum wage is $15 and these guys are getting 25 cents a package, if their metrics are good, right, and you're averaging at $150 a day, running 8 to 14 hours, like 200, 200 to 260 stops is what they told me when I was going through onboarding. So let's say 200 stops, you're not doing that in eight hours. That's why most of these guys are out 10 to 14 hours. They complain they're out 10 to 14 hours. So do the math. And that's why these DSPs don't want to pay hourly. They're, they're hiring 120 a day, 115 a day. They're not making the money. Hourly, 10 hours at $15 an hour, that's 150 right there. This is why they're not making the money. Amazon is not paying for nothing. You think they that they care about the vans? They're leasing the vans back to you. You're paying for the vans. They got the money. They can call up uh, Ram. They can call up Mercedes. They can say, man, just keep building them. Keep building them. And this color code we're giving, this funny-looking blue, and keep building them and keep sending them. Just keep building them until we say stop. If you order a Sprinter, if you order a ProMaster, if you or whatever from the manufacturer, the the cost that they're going to tell you is totally different from Amazon when you're ordering thousands and thousands of these vans a year. They ain't, paying, they, they, they ain't filling the, the cost of these vans because they're charging it back to you. Then they're sticking you with the bill. I spent $33,000 on damages on 20 vans before. But Element is helping me out by giving me 90 days to pay the bill starting July 20th. Poor guy, right? This poor guy. Please fix this ASAP. The process ruined a family relationship. Post peak, post peak 2019, we had to give back 24 vans on short notice. My younger brother got them fixed, and the cost exceeded 125 grand. Fast forward to Monday, and I get a bill from Element for 30,000 for damages on 14 vans. I champion this program to many people. I pitched it to former pro athletes. Have been a personal sounding board for others. In theory, this program is awesome. Theory is reality. It's not reality. And we need some major changes to the fleet process, wrote another delivery company owner. I turned in a total of 47 vans, but I've only received an invoice for 38 of them, averaging 7,000 a van. I'm estimating a total of $336,000 after the Amazon discount, another owner wrote. $336,000. So when you transition out or when they fire you, or they let you go, I won't say fire it, when they just terminate your contract for whatever reason, whether you on good terms or bad terms, they're still going to bill you for everything. When they, when Element assesses those vans, they'll charge you for all that stuff. They're going to get you coming and they're going to get you going, right? They're going to get you coming and they're going to get you going, all right? Let's look at um, this. Um... This is a lady who is a DSP. She's a veteran, so she got the ten thousand dollars waived. They waived the ten thousand if you're a veteran, right? She shut her business down in October 2021 because she saw herself falling deeper and deeper into debt. According to an invoice, she currently owes sixty four thousand four hundred sixty five thousand for damages on twenty four transits. Twenty four transits. Sixty four thousand. So this is obviously earlier this year, and these are the bills. She was running 10 to 12 uh, vans, I believe. My average was 10 to 12 routes a day, she said. But there's no way you can be profitable running less than 20 routes. 
even with 20 routes, you can't be profitable. Imagine running with half of that. She shut it down. She walked away. She didn't get fired. She walked away because she was operating. She got tired of struggling, as many DSP contractors do. When asked whether she could pay off these debts, Angela said, hell no, I won't be okay. I don't have 64000 I have been totally in a state of depression from the time I left there. I'm the kind of person who always has an excellent credit rating, pays every bill. I'm in counseling for anxiety and depression. I've gone through divorce, been a single prayer vet, and never had to file bankruptcy. Now, to think I might have to do that do that weighs on me very heavily. It's 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 and there's two more um, stories like this that I'm not going to get into. But here's another write up on um, uh, uh, some more like maybe four more Amazon people. Amazon entrepreneur dream is closer to a nightmare for many. These people started small businesses with Amazon thinking they could make it big. Now they're battling to keep going and afraid to quit. These guys are afraid to quit because they're gonna under, they know what's going to happen. Like the guys over here that quit or got fired, they're going to get stuck with, even if you're making money, you're still in the red. Because if Amazon lets you go or you decide to walk away, you still have a bunch of bills in the back that they're not charging you for yet. Until you walk away. Until you walk away. Or they let you go. You know? It's 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 and I'm not and I'm not this is this video is simply for clarification and for educational purposes. You can do what, what you want to do. I did what was best for me and I'm glad I did what I did. I'm glad. And I, I was awarded the opportunity, and I walked away. I decided in the 11th hour, you know what, this ain't adding up. And I'm glad, by the grace of God, at that point, and sometimes God works in mysterious ways. Because if they would have, when I applied in 2014, if they would have offered it to me in 2014, I was still green then and not as knowledgeable as I was in 2017. In 2014, I had only been in the game four years. And 2014 was my best year. It was the first year I grossed a million dollars. Right. And I would have took it. In 2017, I, 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 I really broke things down and something was telling me, man, this ain't adding up, man. Don't do this between the, 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 the high demand, the, the metrics, the efficiency and the money. I'm like, man, it's not worth it. It's too risky. And if the risk ain't worth the reward, then I'm straight. God works in mysterious ways. It wasn't my time in 2014 because I probably would have made that mistake. So when he did offer it to me in 2017, I was knowledgeable enough to assess it. And it didn't make sense. You know, these guys here, you know, they're running and they're scared to get out. We're going to take a look at one and then because I don't want to run this video too long. You know, people got short attention span. But, you know, if you're really interested in the Amazon DSP program, hopefully you're still watching this video. Hit that uh, like button. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you're finding value in this video. Um, subscribe to the channel. All right. Um, let's take a look at this guy. The new DSP program. The new DSP program. Remember I told you in 2018 they transitioned from the old uh, format to the new format. It's to solve its problems with last mile delivery. And the reason why they did that, because, like I said, it, it took a lot to get up and running at, in the old platform. It was costing me a quarter million dollars just to get up and running, and they wanted me to do it in 30 days. How many people can come up with a quarter million dollars? The guy that I sat next to at the onboarding when I kept in contact, when he ended up having a factor. He ended up having a factor, and he's filing for bankruptcy. I don't know if his bankruptcy went, it probably went through already because this was like last time I kept up was 2019. So, yeah, and he had a lawsuit. Labor practice, he had some drivers suing him, and one of his drivers killed somebody because they were under extreme pressure to meet the demands of that 99% delivery efficiency rate. Um, Francisco Ramos, an owner based in Denver, said he believes that Amazon's system can make owners even more than the money. Well, this guy right here, he's pro Amazon DSP. He's the only pro DSP guy that I've read an article about. Um, I don't want to talk about him. Um, 
the DSP program is targeted toward people who want to start start their own small business. Um, you got to have thirty thousand dollars in liquid assets. That's something else that I mentioned. You got to have thirty thousand dollars in liquid assets, and you have to be able to have a down payment of ten thousand um, dollars. This article is just just the driver's protocol speak to said the pay of their respective DSPs equated to at least one dollar per hour less than comparable to rates of FedEx and UPS and sometimes two dollars or more. One DSP driver in a metropolitan area said that he and most of his co-workers would rather drive for UPS but the jobs are infrequently available and snapped up immediately. All right so it's hard like UPS and FedEx they don't just throw you out as a driver. Um there and they, they they have extensive training. Look look at this. I grossed three million dollars from Amazon. Another DSP owner sold protocol, and somehow after I pay for everything, I end up making less than ninety thousand dollars. Imagine grossing three million, and you're making less than ninety thousand. So imagine the stress that he went through to produce for this company. The demand that they require. And you'll make less than a person who punches a clock. They go, punch a clock, know a job, do it for eight hours, and go home. As a DSP, you're thinking about your contract. You're thinking about everything while you're at dinner with your family, your business owner. Your mind's always racing. So you're working 24 hours a day. You're working in your sleep. $3 million and you only net less than 90 and the and of that number almost half of it came not from amazon but from federal paycheck protection program loans so this guy had to take out a loan during the pandemic if i hadn't gotten that forty thousand dollar ppp loan my company would have shut down i didn't have enough working capital three million dollars gross not enough working capital think about that the vans are leased you're not paying for gas Right, three million dollars gross, less than ninety thousand, and this guy's happy about a forty thousand dollar PPP loan. He didn't have working capital after grossing three million dollars. Think about that. Owners can also lose money because of driver shortages. That's a big issue. A lot of drivers are quitting because they're not getting paid enough. And then Amazon is faulting you. They don't care. You got this many routes, you need to get them done. I think they they fine you or they charge you back when you don't deliver a route. Like, they take a couple hundred dollars for every route you drop. See? They take a couple hundred dollars for every route you drop every day, the veteran owner said. Amazon has also terminated or threatened to terminate contract, contracts with DSPs that struggle to hire over sustained periods, regardless of the money and time invested into the LLC. Look at this. Owners can lose money because of driver shortage. Depending on the location, especially in rural areas, drivers are hard to find, and finding substitutes is even harder. That means that if a driver is sick or injured, the LLC might have to drop a route. If you don't have enough employees to run those routes and you drop a route, they find you daily. Many drivers also find the job so grueling and low pay that they last only a few months, forcing the LLC to find new workers on a regular basis. Bernard, the driver who worked for two DSPs in the last three years, said that his one-year tenure at one DSP was the longest of more than 30 drivers. Like, Ryan Schmutzer, the owner of a logistics company founded as a DSP near Portland, Oregon, became the public face for DSP owner resentment when he and another Local owner hired a lawyer and threatened to sue Amazon in June 2021. And it just goes on and on and on. Waiting and falling out to get out. Like, it's up to you guys. You know, this is for educational purposes. You know, um, if you are or you, if you apply and you are awarded this contract, you really need to think things through, you know, you really need to think things through. Yes, I'm sure there are some contractors that are succeeding, but probably barely. So is the risk, you know, for this contract, is the risk worth the reward for you, you know? And there's plenty of other articles that are 
speaking of other contractors who are struggling, I've given you some firsthand. And if you do some digging, you'll find this stuff. This is it's, it's out there. Type in Chicago Amazon DSP lawsuits. Type in your own market, Atlanta. You'll find some. Man, there's a guy who hit a dog and they're being sued. They're, they're suing the driver, ran over somebody's dog, backing into someone's driveway. That lady sued Amazon, I think Amazon and Amazon sued the DSP contractor, or she sued the DSP contractor, and then they're turning around and suing Amazon. Amazon don't want no liability. That's why they have it set up so that you're your own boss, but they're dictating you every aspect of the business. But legally, it looks like you're your own entity. But you're really not. You're really a high pay if you're making any money middle manager for Amazon. So um, I'm going to end the video. Think about it. I just wanted to put this out there. Um, www.boxtruckcourses.com. Sign up for one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the upcoming videos. And I'm out. True story, new story, two story, condo, B&B. Four bath, one me, no key, like I did a 